Hey team, welcome to Kolbiashi Maru, the show where web devs all around the world boldly face off against the most logical tools on the web. I'm Colby Fayok, your Space Jelly Commander and host of today's challenge. Today we have Brittany Postma. She is a front-end designer and developer at Coding Cat Dev, where she helps with the CodingCat.dev website as well as co-hosting on the podcast. So let's bring her in. Hey Brittany, do you want to hey. give a real quick intro about yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Postma. As Colby said, I work at Coding Cat Dev. Um, we're doing a site redesign right now. Um, we're moving from WordPress over to Next.js. So we're doing a complete site redesign and moving all of our front end and back end over. So that's pretty exciting. I co host the Perfect Doc Dev podcast also with my partner, Alex, who is a part of Coding Cat Dev. And then I write blog posts and, on dev topics and create course content on Zero to Mastery and um, for Coding Cat Dev as well. Usually centered around the Jamstack and uh, CSS. Good topic. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, if you're new to Colby Maru, our guest will have one hour to complete their projects. Through that time, Brittany will talk out loud as she's kind of walking through the challenge. Um, and also, I'll be asking questions along the way. So if you do have a question, don't hesitate to ask in the chat, and I'll make sure to field it over to Brittany. So today, Brittany will be facing off with building a draggable Kanban app in Svelte. If you're familiar with Jira or Trello, you might have been able to drag around those nice cards around in true Kanban style. And if Brittany doesn't finish the challenge, all is not lost. We'll see how much time we have at the end to finish up, or we'll just chat about what the next steps would be. So Brittany, before we actually dive in, do you want to just touch real quick on the tools that you'll be using? Yeah, so we're going to be using Svelte.js. Um, we're going to be using the older one, and hopefully at the end we might have some time to dive into SvelteKit, but it's still a little buggy, unfortunately, so I couldn't do the whole app in it. Um, but we'll be going to Svelte.dev, and we'll be starting there just from a scratch app. We will be taking some things out and then building out our components. Um, we'll be using Svelte Stores, and then we'll be using a package called Svelte D&D Action. Nice. Add the draggable aspect. Awesome. That sounds great. Cool. Well, uh, if you're ready to go, I think we can get started. Sounds I good. I think I'm all set. Cool. Okay. Well, I'm going to switch the presentation and then let's do a nice little three, two, one. Let's go. All right. So here we are on svelte.dev. This is the main homepage and we are going to just run this command that we have, we see right here. It's npx dgit spelt js slash template and i am just in an empty folder right now just wherever i want to create an empty folder on your hard drive you can do that and then after the space it's whatever you want to name your project so i'm just going to name this kanban and hit enter and that is going to start cloning everything down and i'm going to cd into that folder we created which was kanban and then I will run npm i to install everything. So while that's installing, I haven't actually used dgit before. What is dgit? It just clones everything from git down. Um, it's just, mm. I think it's really just another form of like how npx runs. I don't really know what is different between dgit and just npx. <laughs> is it kind of like the uh, create next app or create react app, but just for any package? Yeah, but I've seen it with other things other than Svelte too. So I'm, I would have to look up and see what the difference is. All right, so that is installed now, and I'm just going to type code period to go ahead and open that up in a new Visual Studio Code window, and I can close this other one out. So in our just plain Svelte package, in our package.json, we have our dev dependencies. It uses rollup as a bundler and we have Svelte. And in our dependencies, all we have is this serve CLI, which serves up our, uh, is that hot reloading? I actually don't know what serve does, but that's what, um, Svelte is a compiler. So it will compile all of our code for us and run it instead of just pushing out, like React pushes out all of the JavaScript to the client side. Spell actually compiles most of it away, except for what you need. Mm. That's right, because they don't actually ship like a, a framework in runtime, right? 
Yeah, there's no framework at runtime. You only ship the JavaScript that you actually write inside of your component. So it's That's really awesome. nice and really lightweight. So in our source folder, we just have app.svelte and that has some basic code. We're actually just gonna rip all of this out for now. And then they have a public folder that has our global CSS file and a favicon that comes with it. Um, this scripts folder, I'm not familiar with. I think they just put just basic scripts in there that you can run for server side stuff. We will not be using that today. So this is your entry point to your app. So you can create props that you need for your app through here, but we will not be using that. So I'm going to take that out. And this is just like uh, app.js in React. Yeah, that looks like as if you're rendering what is it mounting on the for the react app yes and i'm going to move this back to the bottom sorry about that and push that down so we're going to do npm run dev and bring up localhost 5000 Oop, zoom got in the way and here is because i removed that props it's actually got undefined there and we're just going to put hi in there for now so the first thing that we need to work with to create this is to build out our store. So we're going to do that by creating a folder inside of the source folder called stores. And then inside that stores folder, create a new file called store.js and another file called persiststore. In this context, is store kind of like a Redux store where it's your data store? It is very much like Redux, yes. It's actually built into Svelte, so it's kind of just the trying to, it's like an observ uh, observability, observable. So um, okay, it creates like one source of truth for your items that you need to use in multiple components. So you don't have to have like top-down data, props drilling all the way through. You can actually pull in wherever you need. Yeah. So that is, we are going to import uh, from Svelte, we're going to import the writable. And this is how you write to a store in Svelte. I forgot. And so initially we need to create the Svelte store, but we also want to use local storage to persist the store. So we are going to take this and create a function that is going to allow us to set it to local storage. So we're gonna do export const persist store, and we're gonna give it some parameters of a key and then an initial value. I'm just gonna call that initial. And then we're going to create a couple of constants here called persist. And this is how we're going to set to local storage. We're going to local storage and check to see if we have an item in there already. We're going to say, I typed that wrong, local storage dot get item and check to see if we have that key in there already. And that's going to be our persist variable. And then another constant called data. And we're going to check to see if persist exists. So we're going to say, does persist exist? Question mark. And then if it does, we're going to parse it. So we're going to do json.parse our persist variable. If it doesn't exist, so that's that ternary there. We're saying if persist exists, we're going to do this first thing. If not, that's the colon. We're going to do this other thing. So then we're going to set it to this initial value. So the only other requirement of a spelt store besides setting it is to actually return an unsubscribe function from it. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to set our store up to the writable and to that data that's going to check to see if we already have it in local storage and if not, set it to our initial value. And then um, I can't see for the little VS code pop up then we're going to use this callback function 
after writable to do our unsubscribe function. So what unsubscribe is going to do is if anything ever breaks, it's going to set our subscription for our store item to whatever's in local storage. So it's actually going to break it and then just set it so it doesn't change its value anymore. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think so. This seems more like a straightforward way to work with the local storage because I'm never sure with my React apps where to put that kind of thing. Yes, I feel like it's very straightforward and there's not really much setup. Like Redux has a lot of boilerplate code you have to go through. And this, I mean, is just a few lines. And yeah. So we've got our unsubscribe now and we're going to do the stored up subscribe subscribes us to that value. And we're just going to set it with that value callback if anything ever breaks down. And that's that unsubscribe. And then outside of that, we are just going to return the unsubscribe function. Ooh. And then outside of that, we're going to return our store. And that is it for the persisting to local storage. So this is the whole code that you need to set up a store in Svelte and persist it to local storage. Now we don't have any data for our store yet. So that's actually the next part that we need to do is we need to go over to store.js and we need to create some things to go in there. So we're gonna import our persist store that we just created. And we need a few things here. So we're going to create a default set of columns that we're going to use. So basically just um, some default data that we're gonna show. So we need default columns. And that's gonna be an array of objects. So we're going to do an array and we're gonna do some objects. Inside of these, this default columns, we want to create an ID and we're not gonna put anything in here now. I'm gonna come back to this. I'm gonna put a title and I'm just gonna put to do. These are just basic ones that we're gonna start our app with. And I'm not gonna put anything in the cards but I'm just gonna create an empty array there. And I'm actually gonna duplicate this. So I'm gonna copy this three times. And this one is gonna be called in progress. And this one is gonna be called complete. So when you say default columns, that's not like a database column. It sounds like that's the the different columns of, of the actual application, right? Of the actual application. This okay. is just a variable for us to use to pull in some default data. So um, okay. if we don't have anything stored in local storage, this is what it's going to use. So we've got three empty cards. We've got to do in progress and complete for our columns. And I said I was going to come back to this ID because what we want to do is instead of pulling in a package or something to handle IDs, I'm just going to create this little function called UID. And this isn't a perfect way to do unique IDs, but it's going to work for today. So math.random. And to string and substring, is it sub or str to nine? That's just going to create a unique ID on every single one of these when we go back. I'm going to hold Alt. I think it's I'm option guessing, on Mac. So does the substring just take away the decimal in the beginning of it? Um, so we're going to math.random to get a random number. We're going to stringify it basically. And then and substring off. is going to, um, I think it's something I, f I found this online, honestly. So it's just, uh, doesn't yeah, it think split? It's gonna it takes, trunk, trunk, it yeah. takes the second and the ninth character. So it just makes it more random. Yeah. 
And so I held alt, I think it's option on Mac to select each of these three. And I just added in that function. So each time we run that, it's actually going to create a unique ID. So that is our default data that we need. And now we need to, um, let's see. We need to persist our source. So we need to run our function from the persist store that we created. So we're going to export this function called store. This can be called anything you want. I could call it boards or whatever. It just, I just chose to call it store. So persist yeah. store, and we're gonna run that function with the key that we're going to use and then the initial value. So our key that we're going to create it under is store. And then our initial value is actually going to be these default columns. And that is running this function that we have over here in persist store with that key and the initial value. So we're actually putting in store as the key and that's going to store that in local storage for us. And if we don't have that key, it's going to send in this initial, which is our default columns. So that is that part. And the only other thing that we need to add in here is we need to be able to add and we need to be able to delete. So we are going to create a couple of functions to process those. So we're going to do an add column here. And to do that, we need to grab our store that we just created and we need to run an update function on it. So Svelte stores, go over here and see if we can search Svelte stores, like a type. custom stores, let's see. They have a subscribe, set, and update that you can pull off of them. So each object has, you can either subscribe, update, or set. So we're going to use the update part of that. And we are going to update our value. We're gonna take the previous value and create a new version of it. So we're going to say get new column. Oh, I forgot to create a function. So before we do that, we need to come back up here and we need to create a function called get new column because we need to be able to run and get that new column. So this one does not need to be exported because it's just going to be a local function. And we're just going to return from this our blank column. Okay, so this is if I'm in the application and the original columns aren't enough and I want to add a new one, this is going to just generate a new ID. Yes, so we created column. some default columns, but then if we ever need to add a new column, so we're going to create a button that's going to allow us to add columns to it. So this is just going to return a new column. Nice. So it's just a basic one single column with, it's an object with an ID, a title and cards so that we can add that to our application. So then we're gonna throw that in here and we're gonna say get new column. And then we're going to um, spread across the previous value so that we're not actually changing our store. We're spreading in plus getting the new column. So we're creating a whole new array. And that is all we need to add a column. And then to delete a column, we need to kind of do a similar thing where we delete the column, but this time we need to take in the ID. So we need to add the ID in as a parameter and we need to run the store.update function again and take in our previous columns and we need to filter those columns. So we're gonna say filter and we're gonna filter each individual column inside of that for the ID. And if it is not equal to that ID, it's going to pull it out. So that is kind of a shortened version of just saying, if you find this ID, take it out. So we want to remove that column that matches this, that ID. And in this instance, the argument to update is, it's still the same as previous, but now it's just a little bit easier to read as the columns, right? Yes. So just kind of 
maps kind of maps into the store. So we're going into the columns and then into the each individual column, finding the idea of that column and pulling it out, cool. essentially. Okay, our stores are completely set up now. So we can actually go back into our app and we can start building out our functionality. So in here, we are going to import. We need to import from our store. I don't know why it's not giving me the IntelliSense. Oh, because I'm not in a script. <laughs> <laughs> to use to React components. <laughs> yeah. That is definitely true. I am. So Svelte looks a lot like just HTML. You use this script tag at the top to write your JavaScript. Anything between the script tag and a style tag is just like HTML. It, use a temp it uses a templating language that has some sugary syntax in there, but most of it is just HTML. So um, we can create a style tag right now. And I actually have prettier set up, so it is going to format mine to be at the bottom. So I will I have it set up to do scripts on top, then the markup, and then the styles. Nice. So uh, by default, I believe it's script, style, and then your markup. So does uh when it actually compiles it, does it pull the scripts? Will the styles be at the bottom of the page, or does it kind of rearrange things as it compiles all the code? That depends on how you have your VS code set up, I think, because I have prettier installed and I actually have a, I don't have a config file in here, but I have it set up globally to save um, format on save. Gotcha. So it will just automatically do that. And it, for some reason, format has been a little buggy for me. So when I formatted that, it just moved that over a little bit, but I have format on save turned on, but it has not been working for me lately for some reason. Prettier is a little buggy sometimes. So in here, we're just going to write some HTML and we're going to get something on our app. So we're going to do a section first with a cla uh, section class. How do you do that? Oh, I'm trying to remember my Emmet key settings. So section with a class of board, and that is just going to be our whole app. And in here, we need a button to be able to add our columns. So let's just get some stuff on here, button. And in Svelte, we have this special syntax to run a for loop. So if we want to loop over something, we can do these brackets, pound sign, and then each. And it's actually going to run each thing in an array. And it also has this special dollar syntax to make a variable re uh, reactive. So if you want to change every time a variable updates, um, we use this dollar syntax and we can grab our store variable and it will be reactive. So every time the store updates, it will change that store. And we're going to loop over that as a column with an index. And, and just a quick heads up, we're just under 40 minutes left. Okay. And I, that's supposed to be parentheses. So parentheses, we've got each store as column index and then grab the column ID off of it. And that you can just put in parentheses and spell it. And I feel like I still have one too many brackets there, I do. And then to close a loop, we just, type backslash and then each, just like that. So now it's going to loop over our store, whatever is inside of that. So in our columns, we need to create a div with class equal to, is that how you do that? Nope. Trying to remember the Emmet things, but it is not working. Class equal to column. Yeah, I still have yet to get on the Emmet wagon, though you're not the, I don't think you're the first person on here with it. Um, it comes automatically with VS Code, though, so I don't know if you use VS Code, so I think it's baked in now. Okay, yeah, I use it, but I guess, I don't know, I'll have to look more into that then. 
I'm just going to set the ID of our column to that column, that ID that we created, column.id, and set the index to actually in Svelte, we can do IDX. So it allows this shorthand syntax where we don't have to say IDX equals IDX. We can actually just shorthand it. Okay. And then inside of our columns, we want to create a header. And in that header, I want to give an H2 with an input inside of that. And I want to give this input the value of the title of our columns. So in Svelte, we have a bind. So bind colon, and it will allow us to bind a value to that input. So anytime the input is changed, it will change the value of that with it if that makes sense find value equals column dot title and we need to close our input and that closes the h2 already and then inside of our header i also want to add a button to um I'm going to give it a class of delete to delete our column. We're going to go over to hero icons. I'm going to use um, a garbage Love can. Hero icons. Yes, it's awesome. So we're not in JSX, so I'm just going to copy the SVG and put that in here as our delete. Just get a little trash can in there. And that is our header for our column. And now after the header, I want to add a button. And this button is going to um, add our cards. So we're going just going to do um, the HTML syntax and plus print colon, semicolon. I think that's So we right. got a question from the audience. James wants yeah. to know how the project's going. The projects? <laughs> Which project? The project? I'm guessing this project. <laughs> this project? Oh, yeah. good. I hope. <laughs> we don't have anything on the screen yet, so we'll see. I think it's going well so far, though. Hopefully, we will see something on the screen in just a second once I save this. <laughs> I keep forgetting where I'm at. OK, add card. Let's actually save that and see if we get anything. It's mad at me. Why are you mad at me? Cannot resolve. Store, store. Oh, because I have two dots there. That might be why. Okay, now we yeah, have something. We have, <laughs> we have something to look at now. That's better. Let's move that over just a little bit. Okay, so we have our add card button. And then next we need to um create our section for our cards so we're going to put that in an article and we're going to do another each so pound each and that gives us our each block and we're going to create um column which we created inside this each block so we're actually it's almost like looping through a for loop twice so we went through the store and now we're inside the store and now we're going to loop through our columns to get to that card. So we're going to get the column.cards as card, card, oh, what did you just change to? Card, card index. See, that's the kind of thing that my autocomplete always does and frustrates me. <laughs> it, that does drive me crazy. It happens infrequently, thankfully, but I, I don't see it did it again it just doesn't and it's like always that. random things yeah it's like where did you even think about getting that <laughs> i don't know so we close our each block we have our column our cards each block so this is going to loop over our cards and display them for us inside that we had the article we're going to give each card its own section and i'm going to name that class of card And inside of this section, we need to have another, I'm going to put it in a header um, just so I can do the styles later together. So we're going to put a header and we're going to have an H3. And then inside this H3, we're going to do a similar thing where we did this. I don't think I put the type on that other one. 
type equals text. Let's see. Input. I did not type equals text on that input. The browser probably <laughs> identifies it as text. By it probably default. does by default, but I, don't I wonder know. if there's any like wonkiness in that. Like if it would, like if the, if there would ever be a bug because of that. I'm curious. Yeah, there might be. So we're going to bind that value again so that it will change with our cards. So we need to grab our um, column dot cards and we need to give it the index the correct index so we're going to grab that card index right there and we want this to have the title so we are grabbing the column oh i didn't close the input tag i'm like why are you mad at me we're grabbing the column going into the cards grabbing the index of the card and then grabbing the title and we're putting that bound to the value of the input makes sense. That makes sense so now we have some card titles in there and the reason you're making an input is so that we can make it editable as you're working through the app that way we can change it later on when we get to that part okay so we've got header h3 button um we closed our header we closed our section we closed our each now we need to add some functionality to this because right now we're not really doing much except looping over everything and showing it. So we need this button to be able to add cards and we need our columns rather and this button to be able to add cards. So Svelte has another special syntax is on colon and that is going to create any um, window event that you can create is going to allow you to do that inside of Svelte. So on colon click, we are going to run one of our functions. We're going to run our add column function. So we need to import that and that's coming from the same location. So we're just gonna go up here to our import and add column. We're actually going to do the same thing on this button except we need delete column. And it automatically added that. That's when auto right. auto uh, <laughs> complete is good when it does things like that, but it can mess you up. So should that delete column button then say delete card then? Did oh, I wait, name that column? Wait, oh wait, add, yeah, this is, this is the wrong one. I'm sorry. Okay, no. You're right. This one should be delete. Mm, right. And oh, I didn't I don't have anything on it. I see. I see what I did. So our add column is actually this button way up here at the top. There we go. Okay. And this one should just have that and plus on it. So now we've we got go. this button. And if you saw that, it's not styled very well right now. So <laughs> we can add these columns. And I don't know nice. why. Oh, remember, we need to put the ID into that. So we need actually we need delete column to have our column ID. And that's also not showing the delete because you did an icon. It's not showing the delete, the delete right? SVG yeah. either, is it? I wonder if that's special. because of the color. So I wonder if we should go into global CSS and add a few styles real quick. Let me see here. I'm just going to add minimum height of 100 VH on the body. And trying to think of, I want to add the before and after box sizing, border box. And I'm actually gonna set all the margins and paddings to zero here too. And so that did something. Let's see what else we can do. We can make our 
board class. Um, spelt styles are actually scoped by default. So we could just use, I mean, we do have multiple sections in here. So you could use section, but then it's going to affect this too. So. Oh, that's nice then that it uh, scopes it. So it it's does. almost like the CSS modules approach kind of, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm trying to decide if we should add this here or start trying to break out some of it. I'm going to start creating some components real quick. Components folder and I'm going to create some files that we're going to throw some of this into because we have our functionality. I don't know why. That delete class is not showing up though. Let's see. Let's give it a background of red. And let's give it a width of like 20 pixels for now and see. Oh, there it is. Hmm, yeah. Oh, okay. So we have our functionality. We can delete the columns and then we can add new columns. And nice. if we go into our inspector tool here, oh, I think that's going to be really huge because I was using it on my 4K monitor. So we're going to minimize I mean, that I down. I think that looks pretty great as is. I don't know about the audience. Was it? <laughs> okay. So this is our store now in local storage. So it's actually, it has four columns here. We can see zero, one, two, three, because it starts at a zero index. We've got one. It's kind of hard to see where our columns are. Let's give that... What did I name it? Call border one pixel solid black. There we go. So now we can see one, two, three, four columns. And we can delete those columns. We can add more columns back. And each time it's going to change our local storage for us. I don't, this is not the right one. There it is. Now we have three and that's correct. One, two, three. Okay. That's the one thing with working with local storage between apps, right? Uh, like yes. So apps. another app was saved in there and I was like, what is that? But that was not yet. We are doing a hackathon on ZTM and they're creating a similar app. And that was that that's app. Awesome. <laughs> so our ad card is not working because we have not set that up yet. So let's move some of this out. And then, so I need to create columns. Column.spelt. Cards.spelt. Card. Whoops, not a new folder. Okay. Now, I'm going to start moving some of this just so we can read it a little bit better. So I want my app to actually just have a board component. The columns component and that be it. So basically I want this to work. So what I need to do to get that to work, I'm gonna uncomment all this cause I should have done it separately. Is to import board um, components and get our board. And you actually have to type, one of the unfortunate things about spelt is you actually have to type the dot spelt in there. It does not automatically do that. It's one of the just little crazy things. I wonder things. if that's because of how like, is, does it use Webpack to compile? I wonder if that's just because it doesn't resolve that file type. It uses Rollup right now, and they're actually going to be using Snowpack and Rollup in a combination in spelt kit. So um, it's, you still have to type that out in, that too. So I don't know if it has something, it, I'm sure it has something to do with the way it's bundled. So we're going to pull some of this functionality out to our board. So on the board, I want to be able to have like an empty section that we can reuse. 
So we're going to pull in that script tag again and import, because we still have to have our add column here. We're going to import the add column. I can't type very well. From our stores and from the store. And here, I'm going to take that section. I wonder if I split these. Is that too small? Um, I think it's OK, since you're not doing anything super wide right now. But if anybody's having trouble uh, seeing that, definitely let us know in the chat. OK, so essentially what we're doing is we're taking this section class board and this button. I'm just going to grab those and copy those over here. And then we're going to close that section off. And in Svelte, we have this empty section that we can create called a slot. And what this slot does is any children of this component will go into that slot location. OK, so that's like a default way of like, so I'm comparing it to React, where we pass in the children prop and dump it. That's it's It would be thing. like putting children there in React. Yes, exactly. So that is saved. I'm just going to say it's really nice how easy it is to grab the store globally from all the different files like that. It is, yeah. So it allows you to just pull it in wherever you need it instead of having to like worry about it being at the top, drilling it down yeah. through wherever you need it. I mean, it's just available to you, which is really nice. So in our columns component, um, we are going to, um, we need to have this each block. We're not going to be able to grab all of it because it's got some more stuff in there. I think I missed this SVG. Grab that SVG in the button. And then close the header. And the div. Okay. So we have here. You need to close that each as well. Oh, yep. OK. And I think my div should be outside. I don't know why. OK, I do need to close the each. You are correct there. So close the each. Let's see what we need. Now I'm struggling to see. So I'm going to go ahead and save and it's going to break our app, but that's fine for a second. <laughs> I'm going to format this because I can't read it. Let's At see least the formatter worked this time. Yes. I, it doesn't work on save for some reason. And hmm. I don't know. So we've got our div. So just so you know, we're about 20 minutes left. Okay. Let's see, we got a section. Oh, is that what I'm missing? I need a section in here. Okay, we need to get some functionality in here. So let's import our, um, we're gonna use the column. So we're actually going to import from the column component that we haven't created yet. We're going to import our store again from, we need to go up to, whoops, stores, store.js, and we need to grab, is that it? Still not using this correctly. Okay. I put a section here and this needs to move down here. There we go. So we've got our header around a Oh, I see what I'm doing. I was grabbing the column and this is actually the column. So this is just supposed to be our <laughs> list of columns. And I'm like, why is that not working? But this is just gonna be our column here. Oh you my probably goodness. Paste that over to the column file, right? Unless you already lost it. Uh, I did not lose it. So I could probably just paste it over there. Yes. 
and we need to pass in some props. So to do that, we need to pass in the column. We need to pass in the index and we need to close our column. And then that is all we need in that for now. We need to get in our column. It needs to have, need to import. So we need a script tag again. We need to import our store and our delete column. From our stores store. And we're going to use the cards component here. To type in that spell. So now we've got our header. And we don't need this section here because we used it on the other page. We've got a header, we've got a title, our button. And then after the header, we need to have our other button that we used on app here. This button to add our card. Um, here. And we need to get our cards component and pass in column. Get mad at me because I didn't put a space there. I'll do that in a second. Column and index to our cards component that we have not created yet. So that syntax, the bracket, column, bracket, does that mean that it's going to be available as column inside of the cards? Yes. Okay. And um, I'm actually going to show you right now because if you notice, we actually don't have this column.title here because in Spelt to get a prop to actually pass through, you need to export it from the component that you're using it in. So we're going to export let our column and export let our index so that we're actually passing those into this component and allowing them to be accessed back in the columns component. And then we need to go over to cards and create our cards. Probably should have left all this in the other file at this point. Script, we need to import um, our store again. That. And in this one, we needed that column and we needed the column index. Call. I'm calling it different. Okay, so on this, let's go back to apps, app, and grab this article. That in there, we've got the article, and we're actually going to give that article this column index. Just set it like this column index. And then we've got each column.cards as card, card index, card ID. And we're getting another header with the H3 and the input. And inside, that's actually our card. So we're actually going to take that right there and make it our X, control X, to get that out of there and do our card component and pass some of this into our card component. I can't type today. My goodness, card, <laughs> card index, card index, and close that. It's mad because I need to import that. Card dot spelt. It would be nice if when you clicked on it or hit tab, if it would just instead of changing it, if it would just use yeah. the correct one. I don't know why it doesn't do that. Or add on the dot spelt for you. So we right. need to get our store here again. And we need to get the header. Oh, let's grab, I copied that. 
And then we need to create those export let column index or let card and export let card index. Okay, so now we need to add some functionality. Why is it still mad at me? I don't think columns available in there, right? Columns doesn't exist. So what do what should I have here? Under H3. That something is not right. So, so will you be looking value. for that index in the in the store? Is that this how you should actually it? say card.title. So when we moved it, we are actually shortening some of these because we're pulling in card instead mm -hmm. of the columns. So that's what happened. So when we move that. And this actually needs to have that same delete button. So I'm going to go over and copy this. It just needs to be a little bit different. So put that after that H3. And instead of, we're going to create a delete card function here. And this has to live inside of the, because it's nested, it's a little different with the store. So this actually has to live here. So we're gonna create that function to delete our card. We're gonna pass in the column index and the ID to this. And we're gonna use that special dollar sign syntax and give it our store. We're gonna grab the column index that's passed in, drill into the cards, and we're gonna set that equal to the store, the column index, cards and the filter and because it's an observable with that dollar sign that's why you're able to just mutate it in there right yes and we're gonna do that filter function again to get rid of that one that's equal to that id and so here we need to pass in to delete card the column index and the the column card id here And I don't have card index yet. So we've got a header H3 button. Okay, so let's go back. We've got columns, column. Okay. Board and columns trying to keep these in order here. So then we go into columns and we're looping over each of our column. So each column is getting this. We're going into column. We've got each store as column. We're getting the index and the column ID and we're passing that to column. And we actually need to give this because it needs to have, oh, I didn't mean to do that. A, um, an index on the first thing of an each block. We need to have the ID equal to the column.id and we need to have the index pass through. Okay, and we've got a column So on our column, we need this get new card to work. So we need to add this add card button. So we've got the input with the column.title. We've got a button that deletes the column and we've got a button down here that's going to add our card. So we need to on click. And just so you know, you have about nine minutes left. Ooh. I haven't added dragability yet. <laughs> so we need to create that. And we need to use that special syntax. We need to get the index and the cards and run that. Um, we need to do a similar thing where we get a new card, like we did the column. So we need to get a new card. An ID. And I'm actually just going to go over and copy that from our store that UID function, so I don't have to type all this out. 
just need to grab this part right there and the comma and the title card title okay and here we need to run that get new card function and pass in our spread in our store with the index and the cards so this is drilling into the cards why is this not working store oh Now this add card down here is passing in the index and still doesn't work. What is going on? Button on click add card. Are we not passing our index correctly? Okay. We actually don't need our store here, so we can delete that out. We can delete all this out, and that's our app. Our columns. Where's my board? Is my board what's missing? Board has our add column from stores. We're adding our column. Is this working? This little plus? Yes, that's working. And then into columns. We've got div and okay. Do we have about five minutes left? Yes, yeah, six minutes. Okay. Don't know what so I'm what's... passing in wrong. So I did the ad card is still not working. So we did store, delete column, we've got our cards. Um, get new card, add a card. Header. I can tell it's not working. Because when I click here, nothing is coming up. So it should well be creating <laughs> this new card. Sorry. And we can, should be able to see over here that it's not actually creating it in our store either. Mm -hmm. The button, is it saying anything down here? Yes, it's column. Could not resolve column from columns. Would that be oh, important? because I don't have dot spelt. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness, what is going on? Nervous. Oh. There we go. Now they're working. <laughs> oh my goodness. But the delete buttons went away because I deleted that. So let's get that delete back in. Let's just throw it in global for now. I kind of wanted to show the... Uh, scoping stuff, but um, width, so 20 pixels. Okay, now we can delete and we can add cards. Nice. It still doesn't look pretty, but it is functional. Um, let's add in, actually, I don't know that we have time to add in the dragging. I can just talk about that for a minute. I can, um, how Since we only have take? a, um, it'd probably take a good 15, 20 minutes. So okay. nice. yeah. Um, what I can do is I have a working version of it, so I can throw that up and we can just talk through it if that's okay. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. So I'm just going to close this server out and close this and just open up. Let's see. That's awesome though. I love to, you know. I haven't actually dug into Svelte yet. It was awesome to see how much you were able to do with that. So on this one, I've done a lot more styling and stuff. So we have some, oh, I'm going to have to 
let's just go to the big one. So on this, like I have some like crazy CSS variables and stuff in here. I'm going to run npm run dev to run our server and get that pulled up. And we're going to go to localhost 5000 again, if I can get my Chrome back up. Why? Go away. Too many tabs. Oh my goodness. There we go. That looks okay. like my Chrome browser. And move this to the bottom. <laughs> move panel to the bottom. There we go. Okay. Now we are kind of back to where we were. So this was our old app. We're going to refresh that and it's going to bring up what we had in local storage. There and we're we going to delete a bunch of these. I'm actually going to go into local storage and see if we can delete out our old stuff. I'm just going to delete that store so we can start from scratch and we see our to do our in progress nice. and our complete. It's still not big enough for me. Like I have to, <laughs> I don't know. It's just weird. And then we could add some cards to these. I can nice. go in, I can change, change the titles. And, and for I all intents and purposes, we were really we were really close to that. So we were close except for the styling. So we had the functionality there and we're able to add more columns. We're able to delete. Um, the only thing that we did not get a chance to add is this. And I'm sad because I wanted to talk about spell kit, but spell kit, I'm very excited about once it stops being so buggy. So um, <laughs> with this, we added in this package and it is it can just be a dev dependency. I don't know. I must have installed it incorrectly, but um, spelt D and D action allows all of this dragability because there are people way smarter than me that did. Um, it <laughs> just uses a spell action, which um, allows you to access the node and the params and create actions on each of the things in the window. Which so would is you mind really ex cool. explaining what an, what an action is? Is that just like a almost like a function for spelt? So let me pull up what they actually are. Spelt actions. Does it not have just the docs? Maybe the docs don't deep link. Are the docs just one page? <laughs> Okay, actions are functions that are called when an element is created. So each time the, um, like in React, when a component is mounted and it renders, um, mm. that is called each time. So that's what a spell action is. And so this uh, library has used a spell action and created these functions. So we're handling our um, columns and we're handling the zones that they should be in when you drop them and we're just adding uh using these use directives and the use directive is what this action gets used by with that special colon syntax that spelt provides us so we're saying use this zone and when we use that zone we want to be able to drop it into that div so it's giving us that whole div that we're able to drop it into and then so the cards much, it automatically reads each of those columns as a different piece of that zone yes so it's reading each of those columns as a zone and allows you to drop it only within that zone so you wouldn't be able to like drop it off the screen somewhere mm -hmm. or outside of where you tell it to so you're setting it to that and then inside of each of the columns we are um where's the cards cards we're doing the same thing we're telling it where um each of these cards is and where it mm -hmm. should be so we can delete a bunch of these off and then we can still go over here. You do have to set a minimum height on that. I ran into a bug with this where it needs a minimum height to be able to set it into that. We set that article right here as the zone. And if you don't set a minimum height on that article, it will not allow you to drop that in there. So what that was one use, like Flexbox to push the container to stretch the container or something. Uh, just, yeah, maybe. Actually, I might have been able to do that. I was just trying to figure out a fix and yeah, I put yeah. a min height on it. And that's that minimum height right there. So you can see yeah. some of like the, we have this article here that's not touching any other article on the page and it's all scoped. It's really awesome. Yeah, that's cool. 
So that is the app. Unfortunately, we didn't get to like build out ours, but I do have one that's functional. So I'll, yeah. I can provide the GitHub link for that too. Yeah, so definitely send that over. Out. I can include it in the description on YouTube and everything. And yeah, yeah no, this that, is awesome though. I think, you know, within an hour, I think you got a ton of functionality. You know, just with spell. So that was pretty awesome. Yeah, I got a little lost when I went into trying to make the components. I should have just left it into the app. <laughs> so there yeah. is, I believe that's the right one. Awesome. And Dave says that it looks great. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank cool. you. Yeah, yeah I, I added a bunch more uh, styles and stuff. I got kind of in-depth. I, I do that. I'm really obsessed with CSS. And so I get this oh, crazy, like... CSS is so great. So if you go into my global CSS file, I've got like H... Uh, the hue, the saturation, and the lightness are all separated out uh, into different variables, and then I calculate like which way it goes, and that's kind of crazy. Yeah, Jay would be proud <laughs> yeah. of that. Yeah, I still haven't played too much with CSS variables, but I know that's on my definitely on my to do list to figure out. But yeah, I mean it, it's really cool.